Europeans are becoming increasingly concerned about the rise of Islamophobia across the continent, but particularly in Germany. Politicians there are trying to find ways to integrate the heavy flow of refugees. Recently, the country's interior minister threatened to deport those who refused to learn German. To discuss migrant policy, I'm joined now by Hans-Jörg Müller from the Alternative for Germany party. Hans-Jörg, it's a pleasure to have you here to discuss, uh, among other things, the, uh, the immigration policy and the problems that Germany's um, facing. I, I, and I want to st start with um, a quote that comes uh, from you, to start with, saying that Germany could end up a banana republic without a, a government if the levels of migration continue. What exactly did you mean by that? The, the inference is that the economy is going to be completely destroyed. Yeah, first of all, good evening to you, Neil. Uh, good evening to the spectators. And uh, you think we have to sort out things well. Uh, the vast majority of refugees uh, coming to Germany are no refugees in, in the sense of the word. The vast majority of people who have been uh, living or sitting in refugees camps in Turkey for many years. They do not arrive out of war areas. These people only search a better living and there is no right for a more prosperous life, you see. And uh, usual German original citizens, of course, uh, they are now uh, being aware of that their hospitality is hugely being misused by these economic immigrants. And I think uh, letting them in, it is uh, uh, derogatory towards original German citizens. How is it bad for the economy, though? I mean, if they're economic migrants, aren't they coming to work? They want to earn money, so they have to work to do that. Yeah, because there are official state statistics, I'm now citing state statistics of German uh, ministries, 90% uh, of immigrants have no appropriate education even to do most basic work. Only about 10% of these economic immigrants are, are, can be integrated in the German labor market. So it's, it, it is not, it's no help for our economy, it's a huge burden because we have to feed people, firstly, who are economic immigrants and who cannot contribute to our economy. What about, that's the economic migrants you're talking about. What about the refugees, the people who are fleeing for their lives and we know that they're out there. Yeah. What, do you care about them or not? I think the alternative for Germany party is the only party that really cares about these people. Because in order to care about real refugees, you know, uh, our economy, our state, the hospitality of German citizens is not ill, is not unlimited. And in order to really help uh, the, the real refugees, we have to sort them out, bring in real refugees, care about them, feed them, help them. But is, this is impossible if they are meddled with illegal economic immigrants. You can understand some people being confused about you being a caring, sharing party when your, your leader, your speaker, um, Franke Petri, makes quotes like police must stop migrants crossing illegally from Austria and, if necessary, use firearms. Now, whether or not she was misconstrued on that, that's up for debate, but it's a very inflammatory comment to make, isn't it? Because it sounds like she doesn't sympathise at all with refugees. Uh, yes, uh, sorry now for coming back there. This, it could be misinterpreted. Mm. This is typical for uh, for special misinterpretation by state propaganda by the by the state controlled german western media yeah the mannheimer morgen is part of these mass media frau kepetri has never said this but she had been misconstrued and misinterpreted from the beginning and you know the latin saying qui bono yeah uh, this was only done in order to point at AfD for Germany party as if we were uh, intending to shoot at refugees. We have never intended that and this misinterpreted, and it's my personal opinion, uh, it was uh, especially uh, passed on uh, by our state-controlled media. Okay, well something else I think that needs clarification because it's a quote that's often been associated with your party is the, the, the phrase that Islam in your party's opinion, is not part of Germany. But you add that individual Muslims are. That seems a contradiction. So just explain that for us. Uh, it has to do with uh, institutional rights. Yeah? Institutional rights can only arise from the roots of tradition, from the roots of society. Yeah? Uh, German society has uh, roots of 2,000 years of Christianity. There are no roots of Islam. That is how we put things. That's why Islam as an institution cannot be part 
nor of our society, now, uh, neither of, of, our, of our state. But what, what about the Muslims that you're welcoming in, those refugees yeah. you want to take care of? You've said, what do they do? Do they practice their religion underground? Do they check their religion at the border? What do they do? No, that's what I wanted to add, yeah? That they have all rights to practice their religion and at home, both, uh, both at home and in public, go to, to mosques and so on. So that is what really has to be sorted out. Islam as an institution mm -hmm. cannot be part of our state because we're living in a, in a secular, secularity state. Islam does not accept uh, constitutions. You know, the, the Sharia law cannot be, uh, has no, 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 no point of, uh, of contact with a secularity state. So you can only live either in a, in a constitutional state or in a Sharia state. That's why mm -hmm. Islam cannot be part of our state, but I once, once again want to, to add it. Each Muslim has the right to pray at home and in public. I just want to mention the Turks because you've got more than two million you know, Turkish immigrants who've been there for decades now and, and, and most of them are Muslim. So at what point do you recognize that they're part of German history? Or, you, or do they still have to accept that they're not part of Christian Germany? Uh, they are part as citizens, and they are part uh, citizens praying to Allah. But as I have underlined it, uh, Islam cannot be part of a constitutional state. It is not, uh, it cannot be mixed up. Okay, now there's been a sharp rise in anti-refugee sentiment in Germany. Um, your party has been criticized for stoking up sh such sentiment. Um, how would you res respond to that? And, and and also, how do you feel about the stoking up of such uh, anti-Islamophobic anti, uh, sentiment in such a delicate situation in the country? I think we're just going to actually just hear a, a clip first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it wasn't where we were going to have that clip, but we've seen it, and it represents mm. the, the animosity towards immigrants that, that's mm. arising in Germany. Whether it's stoked up or not is another question. Your party's been accused of that. How would you respond? You know, it has to, uh, it, we have to deal with uh, psychological science. Yeah? Uh, nothing can be provoked uh, if there is no uh, underlying sentiment in a human being. So let's... Uh, sort out between action and reaction. Yeah? What we have seen now in this clip is a horrible reaction. Yeah? And this is the reaction of so-called, let's call them Aborigines, yeah? uh, original uh, citizens of German states in France, in, uh, in, in Britain, Denmark, also in Germany, who now understand that their own government pursues a policy that is first un unconstitutional and that uh, in the long run will wipe out or original population and this is no conspiracy theory so look up all the links of the United Nations yeah, the United Nations have already in the year 2000 claimed that there must be an influx uh, of about uh, one and a half million refugees to the center of Europe in order to compensate for a demographic, uh, demographic problem and that's where the things arise from so uh, Western governments they have sworn yeah, to shelter their original people and to, uh, to pursue constitution, but they do not behave this way. They are violating constitution. Yeah? Uh, they uh, handle original citizens as if they were original or citizens of third or fourth part, give priority to rights to immigrants, and of course, in the last run, uh, when uh, citizens uh, acknowledge that they are not defended by the politicians, who had sworn an oath to defend them, then they try to, to do some kind of self-justice. So who is guilty for what is now uh, going on? That is German government, French government, Danish government, Swedish government. Because, Would you deplore yeah? the kind of actions we've seen, the attacking of refugee centers? I'm completely against it, but I'm once again uh, stating this is now the reaction of uh, original citizens who feel being mm -hmm. treated by own politicians. Do so you sympathize with them? 
No. Are any of them your voters, do you think? Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, then please ask this question. Uh, Mrs. Merkel, if she sympathizes uh, with uh, some kind of international f uh, financial institutions who also vote for her. But are these the kind of people who are voting for your party or are these more far right, more extreme? Yeah, uh, I know the internal statistics of our party mm -hmm. and uh, we are elected. That's a very good question, you know. 35% of the voters of the Alternative for Germany party are migrants with German passport. So you see social democrats, Christian democrats, liberal democrats, the Greens, yeah, they have among their, their, their voters between 10, 12, 13 percent. The Alternative for Germany party has among its voters 34 percent of immigrants of the second generation now with German passport. What, is, what does it tell us? That tells us that especially immigrants who have more sympathy for people coming in are especially voting for the alternative for Germany party. So our voters come out of the middle of society. They do not come from the, from the far right. This is also a special misinterpretation by the state controlled German media. Okay, you, you mentioned the failings as you see them of Chancellor Merkel. Um, I just wanna hear what she's said about the current migrant crisis. Hey, take a listen. Our former president, Christian Wolff, once said Islam is a part of Germany. And that is true. It is also my opinion. Germany will fulfill its responsibility when it comes to aiding those seeking protection, civil war refugees, asylum seekers. Shutting the borders in the 21st century of the Internet era is an illusion. This wouldn't be a reasonable option for Germany, nor for the whole of Europe. So uh, because of the, the sentiment in Germany at the moment, there's a lot of people who aren't happy. It's been easy for, for people to criticise Angela Merkel. It's proved an effective vote winner. But I suppose the biggest question is, what do you do that she isn't doing? What's your party's solution? Our party's solution are the following. First solution is uh, we are the last defender of constitution. We are the last defender of the state of law. Uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, not only Mrs. Merkel, her government, all the, the so-called opposition parties, uh, there's no re a real opposition party in Germany, apart from Alter Alternative Germany party, uh, they uh, are completely acting against constitution, they're breaking immigration law, uh, they're breaking Dublin convention uh, about, about immigrants, so the first thing is, we are the last defenders of the constitution of Germany, which means in order to defend constitution, we have to secure borders. This also means to make it clear not to shoot at anyone, only shut the borders, yeah? mm -hmm. and if people get in illegally, deport them. Yeah? And you don't have to shoot at anyone, because if you de deport them consequently. Yeah? And then, if you really sort out the real refugees, then all the hospitality of, of, of German people uh, will, will arise again, and we will be very happy to, to support real refugees. But first, we have to bring back into order the state of law, which has been abolished both by actual government and by actual so-called opposition parties. And maybe if I, if I may add something, you know, uh, I'm a citizen yeah, uh, of Germany. Uh, I was brought up in West Germany, and I was told that I was grown up in a democracy. Yes, in the 80s back then, still in the 90s, we had a democracy in Germany. Now I'm, I'm, I'm looking, hey, democracy, where are you? No, I can't see any democracy. Did you hear an echo? No, democracy didn't answer anymore. Because that's real uh, status of our state, that everything what has been doing by this government, so-called opposition supported by state-controlled media, is in complete contradiction of democratic rules. And we, the Alternative for German Party, I'm, I'm clearly convinced by heart, we are the real defenders of democracy in Germany. Well, I'd like to quote something else that's come from your, your party, the claim that Angela Merkel's open door policy on immigration, your party says, will eventually lead to civil war and anarchy. Why do you think that? And is it something that you want? Because it would presumably be good for your party. First of all, I'm a German patriot. And you see, uh, the price to get to power only via civil war is too high to pay. But you consider it a possibility? Uh, you know, I, I'm quite 
familiar with history and the warnings of civil war, they arise from uh, a deep -rooted, deeply rooted understanding of history. Whenever in history there was a huge influx of people from uh, foreign societies uh, with uh, foreign cultural values, this always ended up in civil war throughout whole history. That is what we are warning of. Yeah? That is what we do not want to have. And we do not want to have a civil war. For me, and I think for our party, it's better to have to, 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 cro to close the borders only for refugees, not for economic uh, relations. That's also a misinterpretation that is especially being made by German state-controlled media. We do not close any economic borders. Of course, we are a party that has a, a huge part of our program consists of free market economy. Yeah? So uh, we, we support international supply chains and so on. Yeah? But in order to be uh, able to pursue so, yeah, we have to stop this influx now of people with other values who do not share our values, but this will end up in civil war. We do not want to Surely, have. though, in a democracy and in a civilized country, it should never get that far because you've mm -hmm. got elections. Surely people just need to turn up at the polls, and if you're offering what uh, they want, they just vote for you. Isn't that how it works? So yeah. surely you've got nothing to worry about in terms of civil war. You'll just be elected if that's what the people really want. Yeah, and this is now, uh, uh, this is now happening in Germany. And as you know, the reaction also, uh, as usual, by, uh, by uh, the, our political oligarchy, yeah, to put things it, uh, as it is, yeah, uh, both in government and so-called opposition, what do they do? They do defame us as a uh, neo-fascist far-right, uh, which is uh, completely incorrect, but that's the usual way to get rid of uh, competition in polls. Very, very, very quickly, one last answer. Yeah. Isn't there a danger that this is all about migration and that if that issue gets solved, your party is then going to disappear? Uh, at the short run, yes, because of our big uh, program, uh, media, mass media, also in elections, people focus only on the, on the refugee topic. But uh, we are a party now and we will have it the, the 30th of April and the 1st of May, a big uh, party convention uh, to... to uh, to, to agree on our program and once again we are for free market economy but nevertheless help help for for the weak ones we are for a sovereign germany uh, german state because obviously we are not uh, a sovereign state now we are for international relations and uh, we are for international cooperation in the supply chain in economy so we are a party uh, which has a huge assortment of points and, and that's why we'll still yeah that was a question uh, when a refugee crisis, I hope so, will be solved in 10 minutes, yeah? then it will pop out all the other 20, 30 real good uh, uh, parts we have in our program. We will never disappear in this state. I'm very sure about it. Hans Jörg, I would just like to thank you very sincerely for coming into the studio to speak to us about this, this whole range of, in, uh, of issues. Our, our guest is Hans Jörg Müller from the Alternative for Germany Party. Many Thanks, thanks to you, Neil.